You're a kid, leave. Parents, don't let your kids watch this one. I'm highly upset, and I might say some things that children may not need to hear tonight because this is absolute bull. You know what? I won't let that one fly just to give the kids time to run, but it's coming later. The MLF, Bass Pro Tour, is stupid. They are the biggest idiots I've ever seen in an industry at that high of a level. They've just made the biggest business mistake I've ever seen made at the top level of fishing. Dude, they're, they're done. And in fact, if they're not done, I'm done with them. This is the stupidest thing that I've ever seen a business do at that high of a level, probably in any industry, for sure in the fishing industry. What they just did today was, we're fixing to talk about it. Come on in, strap your seatbelt on. Your boy's upset. We're fixing to go on a rant tonight. Uh, no music. We're not in a good mood. We're pissed, but we got this anyway, so cheers, y'all. Let's get it. <clears throat> man, 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 man. What a freaking day. Okay, I am a bass fishing fan. I have been a bass fishing fan since I can remember. We all know, like... I remember Bob Cobb, welcome to the Bassmasters. Every weekend morning that it aired, I'm watching it on back then on ESPN. Man, I've gone back and rewatched Bassmaster Elite Series shows online over and over again, some of them, you know, and I've seen all of them. Um, and now the fishing industry's changed and they do live coverage. And, and that's cool too, man. Like I enjoy that too. I kind of personally have a preference for the old style shows, but I like live coverage too. But for sure, when we go through fall, no, no, no professional level bass fishing to watch. We go through winter, no top level bass fishing to watch, tournament fishing. We get through the first month of, win of the next year, no top level bass fishing to watch. Man, this is a big deal. To us, in Major League Fishing, when I say us, for the record tonight, I'm talking about all of you guys, myself, everybody that is a fishing fan, especially those that are crazy fishing fans for a long, long time like I've been, which most of you guys on this channel are, okay? You guys are big into it as well. This was a huge day because today was the day. Today was the day that as a fan, the wait was finally over. Today's the day that top-level tournament fishing is back on the air. And nowadays we got live coverage and everybody's expecting to do what we've done for the last several years. They're expecting to go to the major league fishing website and watch live coverage off and on throughout the day, the best way they can around work and be able to listen to it in the background while they're working or whatever and keep up with the tournament. If you went to major league fishing's website today, you saw that they didn't have live coverage on there. It's not that they didn't have live coverage. It's not that they're cutting costs to not cover the tournament live. No, that's not what it is. No. They aired it on the freaking Discovery Channel? The people that run Major League Fishing have to be so out of touch with reality that it's just insane. They can't possibly. They've all got to be old as hell. They've all got to be old crotchety dudes wearing tight shorts, screaming at kids to get off their freaking lawn because they are out of touch with reality today. And apparently they're out of touch with technology and they're freaking idiots. They're stupid. They apparently don't understand how many people don't even carry network television because it's stupidly overpriced compared to all the other stuff you can get through streaming services for free on YouTube where you're watching right now. You know how many different movies and shows and talk shows slash podcasts that you can watch for free on YouTube, MLF? Do you know? Like, it's kind of unfreaking limited Here's the deal. Tonight wasn't even supposed to be this. I was excited to do a live stream with you guys tonight because we were going to recap day one and talk about what happened and how it went down. And I was just on Toledo been a few weeks ago, and I was going to give you guys a little bit of an insider look and break down what we saw the pros doing compared to what I did when I was there and the, the conditions the lake we're in and really share some information to help each other learn more about the sport and celebrate the first day of tournament fishing being back for the year. Can't find it. Can't find YouTube videos from day one highlights. Can't find any of that crap. Here's what's more. There was no announcement of this. I mean, if there was, it was very quiet. 
They did not spread the word on where you can watch the tournament, where you can't watch the tournament. What days is it live on the website? What days is it not going to be on it? There was none, none of us knew that. Everybody, in, if you don't believe me, go to Major League Fishing page and read the comments on all their posts from today when they posted pictures of their guys catching fish today. Go read the comments. Nobody in the fishing world had any idea that this was coming. Nobody. They just, nope, no live coverage. And there is no post-day edited shows anymore. We don't do that anymore. So we're never going to see day one from Toledo Bend. And we're apparently we're never going to see the day two. I don't even know. Are they live streaming and covering the rest of the tournament? Or is it all on Discovery Channel? Because I got news for you, MLF. If it's only going to be on Discovery Channel, <clears throat> If it's only going to be on the, I don't know. I looked, somebody's asking, where did it say it was on Discovery? So when I punched into my web browser, MLF live coverage, it posted today. It said, it said something on there about today's tournament on the Discovery channel. That's where I'm getting that information from. Now, it said 2024 Toledo Men. I'm pretty sure I read all that. Now, I did it while I was working, and I was like, what the hell? Actually, I said something else in my head, a different four-letter word. What the? And I got mad, and I clicked it off and put my phone back in my pocket, and I checked score tracker two or three times a day, and surprise, surprise, Jacob Wheeler was leading. So let's go ahead and do a recap of the tournament. Here's our recap from what we saw from Major League Fishing today, folks. Today on Major League Fishing, what we saw is Jacob Wheeler is still a very good fisherman, and he is in the lead with 90 pounds, but it's a fairly tight tournament. And oh yeah, we're doing every fish counts again, so guess what this is? It's just a matter of who catches the most fish, because if you go look at the numbers and break it down, everybody's averaging really close to three pounds of fish, so it's really just about who can catch the most. It's not about who can catch the biggest, who can be the most dialed in and actually perform the best. It's just who gets around the most fish and catches the most. That's what it is. What a freaking thriller it was today. What bullshit is what I should say. Oh, Boyd Suckett and his freaking band have bent me out of shape. I'm being corrected on the Discovery Channel deal. I could have swore the deal I saw today said it was on Discovery Channel. Today's coverage was on the Discovery Channel. But I also could be wrong. I could be wrong, right? So my bad if I am wrong. Because, I'm listen, I'm mad. I'm going to make some mistakes right now. So they're just not doing any live coverage at all on the first two days of tournament season? What are we doing? Why are we doing that? That's not really any better. I mean, it, I thought it was aired on Discovery Channel only, but holy crap, what are we doing? Do you not <laughs> realize you had the first tournament of the year? You had the opportunity, one of the only opportunities that you're going to have to have the entire fishing demographic, every fishing customer, everybody that could potentially buy a sponsor's product was looking for your coverage today. And now, I'm not going to watch any of it. You piss me off. So, you, I'm not watching any of it, MLF. Go chew on that. I cannot believe this crap, dude. Like, it was so, it, it, no announcement, like, no announcement. I guess somebody said Connell announced it a couple days ago. No, but I didn't know about it. Like, I literally live in the industry. And if, you know what I mean? Like, Mm. <sighs> I hate that I was wrong about the Discovery Channel part, but either way, no coverage. Ridiculous. I can't wait for Bassmaster to get started. I've been neutral on this whole Bassmaster MLF deal for the most part. I've called both of them out for things I thought were wrong. I've said I love both of them. I like watching both of them, and I did. But I'm, I'm just sick of it, dude. The way they screwed over the anglers – and just started making changes without talking to anybody. Then they're going to cut the field next year. Oh, no, now we're going to work down to it over two years. They just make all these changes. They, they don't in care at all about angler feedback. They damn sure don't care about our opinion, obviously. So I don't care about them anymore. Like, I'm just – it's just not cool, man. It's not a good customer relationship. It's, it's not good customer relations on their part. And it's not a freaking – I mean, let's be real. It's not as good of a product as Bassmaster. 
Their cover, Bassmaster's cover team is more entertaining. Mark Zona and Dave Mercer and Tommy Sanders and Davey Height. That's more entertaining to listen to than these guys when it comes to bass fishing. Now, I, that's just an opinion, obviously. All this, but look, all of this is just an opinion for the record. All of it's just an opinion. Um, yeah, I'm upset. Whew, I've got to gather my thoughts, man. Uh, dude, like, listen, MLF, here's my message to you. You're done. You're done. I'm done with you. You're not getting any more of my viewership to help your ad revenue go up. That's not happening. I'm just done. And I know guys over there that I like and respect the heck out of. I've texted several of them and talked with several of them before the, the tournament season got rolling, before they were getting close to going to Toledo. Um, and I like those guys, and I wish them the best of luck. And I hate to be tearing down their platform like this but or, or talking derogatory about their platform like this. But, I mean – I guess it's pretty obvious what's been going on. Like all the rumors, all the scuttlebutt, all the backdoor talk that you've heard over the years about how sorry it is to be involved with them. I guess it's really all true. Like it's becoming more and more clear every day how ignorant and out of touch with reality the leadership in Major League Fishing is. Dakota Ebear became one of the absolute stars of the fishing world last year. He was a Bass Pro Tour guy. That's what where he became a star at couldn't keep him around he's going to the opens rather than deal with your crap says a lot and he's not the first one to do it right like other dudes went back through the opens to qualify as well i know paul and nick and swindle got to come straight into the lead series but other like hackney had to go i think hackney requalified chrissy requalified scott martin requalified um Peroznik, i think requalified the list goes on. Guys that were at the Bass Pro Tour that said, no, thank you. Well, Scott Martin qualified. He never went to the Bass Pro Tour. Scott Martin qualified after the split He never, when, F, when, when FLW was gone. Um, that's when he, he never fished Bass Pro Tour. But all the rest of those guys fished Bass Pro Tour, quit, and then qualified through. And now Dakota Ebear is doing it when he just became a superstar over there and made a ton of freaking money over there. It's so bad that even he wanted out. He was one of their boys, one of their guys. And he doesn't want anything to do with them. He's willing to go fish the open. You know how hard it is to go qualify through the opens? He's going to – he'll make money on his sponsorship deals. He's going to lose money at those tournaments as far as the money he spends on entries and expenses, gas, travel, food, lodging. The money he spends on all that and his entry fees, guaranteed he loses money based on what he wins in the opens in that. So he's taking a little bit of a loss there. He'll still make a profit for the year based on sponsorship dollars because he's such a big deal now. But he's willing to go have no tournament winnings for the year. He's not going to have any tournament profit for the year after his expenses. None, no matter how good he does. He's willing to do that just to get away from you because you're such a horrible group to deal with, MLF. What do y'all think? Put them in the comments. Jason Walden said he didn't even know Dakota went. To, yeah, Dakota went. Dakota Ebear went to the Opens. He's fishing the Opens. He, he posted a deal this week practicing on Lake Okeechobee for the first Open. He made an announcement a few weeks ago, a month ago, something like that, on his social media pages. Like, that's what I mean. Like, I don't consume all social media content. I probably don't consume as much as some of you guys do. But I see quite a bit of it, and usually anything that's significant, if I don't see it, somebody sends it to me because I'm in the industry, and I got a lot of buddies in the industry. And so when there's something significant that happens, I'm usually aware of it. And I was completely unaware that we were not going to have live coverage today. <laughs> and I was obviously very upset about it, very upset about it. So that's it. That's, that's the... Uh, Day one tournament recap from Major League Fishing Toledo Bend. They caught an 11-pounder. That's pretty freaking cool. Uh, and caught it early. Would have loved to have seen it. Love to see some footage of that, guys. Got any? That's right. Who is more upset, the anglers or the sponsors? The anglers. Uh, I would say the anglers are more upset. 
because what they do, their opportunity to be beneficial to their sponsors on that level is very limited. And you just took away one of those opportunities. And they're rare. You don't have very many every year. The reason Dakota Ebear is going to be fine based on sponsor dollars is because of the airtime he got last year. And you just took one of those chances away from those guys. So, yeah, the sponsors are going to be upset about it because the guy, all the guys that sponsor all the anglers are not going to like that they didn't get to go live today. But the sponsors will be okay. They're companies. They have other marketing programs. Those guys are going to do other marketing throughout the year. The sponsors will not like it, but the anglers are going to be more upset about it than the sponsors because it is a big part of their career success is dependent on exposure that they can generate to generate sponsor dollars. What is my PB on Toledo? God, I don't even know, man. Um, man, I fished it off and on through most of my life. Um, that's a hard one. I mean, I've caught, I haven't broke 10 there, but I haven't, I fished it off and on most of my life, but it's always just little one, two or three day trips. You know, I don't ever go down, I've never gone down there and stayed there and really dialed it in. I just go down there and catch the crap out of them because it's Toledo and have fun for a few days or last time just one day or sometimes two days and then I come home. But I've caught some eight and nine pounders out there, I know. But I, I don't, I've never broken 10 on Toledo. 100% sure about that. <laughs> do you think it's a tactic to create demand? Do I, if, I, if it was a tactic, it just proved, if it's a tactic to create demand, if that's what they were thinking, hey, let's do this, and it'll create more demand for more people to watch on the other days. Again, how out of touch with reality are you? There's no chance you're creating more demand for fishing viewership than the first day of the first tournament. Nobody has seen live tournament coverage since last summer. There's no way the demand's going up. And now what you've done is you piss people off, like me. I'm not watching. If you go read the comments, that I'm not the only one. There's plenty of folks out there that are upset about this and are just like, you know what, screw them. This is bull crap. Hashtag Major League Fishing hates fans. Like they don't, they, apparently they hate money too because they're, when I say they're not in touch and they don't see the big picture, like in today's world, we can't watch top level tournament fishing. And that's a unique thing. On, on, not all the time. But you can consume fishing content all the time. It's a very competitive market. You need to be getting every piece of content you can out there. Watch what happens with Bassmaster. And Bassmaster still doesn't fully grip and understand. In my opinion, they don't fully grip and understand and capitalize on social media. But what they will do on the first day of their tournament is they're going to cover it live. It's going to be on their website. Then they're going to take clips from the day, and they're going to make highlights out of those and post those throughout the day on, different, on all the social media platforms. You will be able to go to Bassmaster's YouTube channel on the, day, the first day of the tournament and see highlights throughout the day. If this was day one of Bassmaster, we could go to their YouTube channel right now and watch probably eight or ten videos from today or five or six videos from the day. Breakdowns, uh, you know, analyzing what's going on in the water. Highlights throughout the day. The midday break that they do on the live covers, they put that on as a YouTube video after. Um, all that kind of stuff. And I'll say Bassmaster doesn't fully grip it because they don't, they don't embrace and educate themselves and actually try to understand how social media works. They don't title their videos based on what will help get more views around what's in the video. They don't do the thumbnail game the way that the guys that are really big on YouTube and do it for a living and are very successful do. They don't do the thumbnail game the same way those guys do. Um, yeah. I guess that's it. Rant's over. That's the uh, day one post-game wrap-up. Official for Major League Fishing. Officially unofficial. We are officially unofficial, I'll say that. The officially unofficial post-game wrap-up for Major League Fishing day one, Toledo Bend. There it was. Hope you enjoyed it.
Here's the other thing. Maybe this is it. I have no knowledge of this. Hasn't heard, haven't heard anything. Maybe they had so much cheating on that tour last year and the year before that they were scared to go live day one because they didn't want another cheater to get caught on camera. <laughs> That's a joke, folks. That's a joke. Mm. Yep. That's it. I'm going to end this video with that. I'm going to wrap it up right here and just say that I'm highly, highly, highly disappointed in MLF. And uh, yeah, you're done for me. I'm done. Good luck. Hope you don't fail. That would be really terrible for all the great guys that you have fishing in your organization that are paying customers of yours that you don't even consider when you make big business decisions that affect their livelihood and they're paying customers, you still don't consider their input and you don't consider any of your fans' input? Yeah, whatever, dude. Wish you the best of luck. Go have fun being self-absorbed, out of touch with reality, and just flat out stupid at times. Good luck with that. That's it, boys. I'm out, making it quick. Not in the mood to talk about anything. I'm like really upset about this. Very upset about this. It bothered me way more than it should have, but I love bass fishing. I've been a fan of it my whole life, and I'm like a very, I'm like a Dallas Cowboys fan a few weeks ago. I'm very upset. If I had MLF paraphernalia on the walls in here, I'd be able to rip it off stomping on it like all them Cowboys fans were. Which, by the way, I like the Cowboys too, but I'm not that big of a Cowboys fan where I was ripping stuff off the wall. But cheers, y'all. Y'all have a good rest of your week. We were going to do live post-game wrap-ups every day, but I guess, uh, yeah, we'll just see you Thursday, and we'll do a Top Bates live stream or something like that. So appreciate you guys joining as always, and uh, we will see you next time right here on your Lake Fork Pissed Off Guide.